In this video, we are going to talk about the Lightning Web Component Bundle. That means if you create a new Lightning Web Component, what are the different files that gets created with it? What are the uses of those different files? And what are the things that you need to write in those files? So let's first create a new Lightning Web Component. And I'm going to use my command palette for that. I'm going to run my command create Lightning Web Component. And here I need to supply a name for my Lightning Web Component. I'm going to give it a name as Hello World. Make sure that you give your Lightning Web Component name in camel case because that's how it works with Lightning Web Component. Then it's going to ask you about the folders. Let's give it a default folder itself. Now it will create a new component folder inside the LWC folder of your project. Like here it has created a Hello World folder. And in that folder, there are three different files that Salesforce CLI created for us. There is a HTML file. There is a JS file and there is a meta file or we can say XML file. So the use of this HTML file is that it holds your component markup. So it's a plain HTML file. You can use your normal HTML or you can use the base Lightning Web Components to construct your markup. All your markup should go within this template tag here. You cannot write anything before or outside the template tag. So everything that you want to write, let's say if you want to write a div tag here you need to write within the template tag itself so that's the uses of this file here you need to construct all your markup after the markup if you want to write some client side logic then you need a js file and for that we got our js file right here the js file at the very least has two statement the first one is the import statement and this import statement is being used to import any of the ECMAScript module in your Lightning Web Component. Like here I'm importing a LWC module inside my Lightning Web Component and that's a mandatory step that you need to do because you are not going to use your HTML element here. You are going to use a Lightning element which is a wrapper of the normal HTML element. And also it has the export statement which kind of export this current file as a ECMAScript module so that the other files can use it or import it as a ECMAScript module. So this ex export statement also has a class name. So this class name is same as our component bundle name. The only thing is it is in Pascal case that means our H is also capital here instead of the camel case. And it extends a lightning element which means we want to import or we want to use all the properties of lightning element while we construct our custom element here. And all your client side logic needs to go within this parenthesis here. That means this class should be your scope to write any of the client side logic. If you want to declare some properties, those should go here within this parenthesis. If you want to declare some of the methods, client side methods, those should also go within the class scope itself. If you want to include other properties from a module, you can use comma here. So like apart from lightning element from the LWC module, if you want to import other properties, just use your comma here and keep on importing those properties. If you want to import multiple ECMAScript module, you can use multiple import statement here and keep on importing those modules as well. So you can have as many import statement as you want and you can include all those ECMAScript modules. The third file that Salesforce CLI has created for us is the meta file or the XML file. So this file holds the meta properties of your Lightning Web Component. Like what is the API version of your Lightning Web Component? Where this Lightning Web Component can be used inside? Like what are the different Lightning containers where you can use this Lightning Web Component? What is the description of your Lightning Web Component? You can define the description as well here. You can define the targets where you can put this Lightning Web Component. You can define the target configuration as well. Like what if you want to use App Builder properties or design properties, you can define those here in the meta file itself. So it's a pretty useful file when you want to make your component more usable or if you want to resurface your component inside multiple Lightning containers. Apart from these three files, you can also create a CSS file and the SVG file inside this component bundle with the same name. So let's say if you're using any custom class in your markup, then you can define the properties of this class inside a CSS file. So for that you need a CSS file inside your component bundle. So right click on your component bundle here and click on new file. 
the file name should be same as your component bundle like hello world and then the extension should be css so this will create a css file inside your component bundle and you can define the properties of your css classes inside this css file and here you can keep on defining the properties of your class apart from the css file you can also use a svg resource file here like if you want to declare a custom icon then you can use the svg file here the name should be again same as your component folder name and the extension should be svg and inside this file you can define your custom icon resource so these are the different files that exist inside a component bundle and you can use these as per your needs the only required files here is the javascript file or the controller file and the meta file of your lightning web component folder all the other files are optional and you can use those as per your use case oh here i did not make it class we are going to use all these different files as part of this course and we are going to do a lot of coding and we are going to put a lot of different properties in all these different files for now this is all in this video and i'll see you all in the next video